One of the biggest problems for climate change as a political project is that it is typically cast as a niche issue for a small interest group, especially by the elite media. The problem is that climate change is understood as an environmentalist issue, and that simply isn't right. Environmentalism is a movement rooted in the 1960s whose quintessential project is the protection of a bit of the natural environment in a mostly unaltered state, like a national park. Implicit in this kind of project is a tension between human interests and environmental interests. A bunch of druids want to preserve the redwood forests, a bunch of dudes in flannel want to grind them into sawdust to be put in breakfast cereal. Climate change is not like this. I'm not saying that climate change isn't a major threat to the current biosphere, nor am I saying that other species don't have moral worth, but the point is that there's not some kind of easy trade-off between humanity and nature. When we dammed Glen Canyon to create Lake Powell, it was a monstrous crime against all that is sacred, but we humans continue to live our lives largely without disruption. Climate change, on the other hand, is a direct existential threat to the biosphere and all of human civilization. It's just too big to fit into something like environmentalism. Climate change is arguably the biggest threat modern society has ever faced, with the possible exception of nuclear war. But at the very least, it's bigger than communism, bigger than al-Qaeda, bigger than fascism, bigger than all of them combined. But hardly anyone seems to grasp the gravity of this situation. During the whole of 2012, the Sunday talk show This Week, Face the Nation, and Meet the Press spent less than eight minutes altogether talking about climate change, and not once did they speak to an actual scientist. During the three presidential election debates, the words climate change were not spoken. When they did talk about energy issues, Romney and Obama spent most of their time arguing about who was more pro-fossil fuels. In a way, it would be comforting if there were a simple trade-off here, with a bunch of cackling suits raking in money on one side and some poor woodland creatures being put to the flame on the other. Because that would not imply a total breakdown of our society's instinct of self-preservation. Instead, it's like we're watching space Nazis launch asteroids at us, and the mainstream media talks exasperatedly about those space Nazi people who are so quaintly concerned that we're all going to be vaporized in a giant fiery cataclysm, while our top political leaders argue about who is more pro-asteroid. We're not just watching some evil corporation profit from raping the collective commons, we're watching our society commit suicide. So what kind of issue is climate change? It ought to be its own altogether. There is no area of human activity that is not put in dire peril by the specter of it, unless you count dying in mass. Take the economy, for instance. The few conservatives that acknowledge climate change at all argue that acting to prevent it will harm our economy, but they do not really grapple with the economic implications of unchecked climate change, especially more than 100 years out. The simple truth is that if we do not get our asses in gear, there won't be much of an economy left to be harmed. We're already seeing how this will happen. In the agricultural sector, 2012 saw the worst drought in America in 50 years and a whopping spike in food prices. Or imagine how expensive it will be to build seawalls around our coastal cities, or move them all together. The economically responsible thing to do would be to attack climate change right now so we can avoid these costs. A study from the International Energy Agency calculated that every year we wait without acting, we add $500 billion to the price of the required investment to avoid climate change impacts. So if we must stick climate change into an existing box, probably the best one is national security. You remember after 9-11 when America decided it was the worst thing that had ever happened to any country in the history of time, and we traipsed all over the globe stomping random countries into the dirt in a fit of omnidirectional vengeance? Well, you might have noticed that very same city got punched right in the teeth by a mutant hurricane the other month, beating the previous storm surge record by more than a foot, knocking out power to 8 million people, with damage totaling at least $50 billion. If national security means anything, it's protecting our largest city from direct physical devastation. And Sandy was exactly the kind of thing that will only become more common as climate change gets worse. I wouldn't say that national security framework is definitely the right one for climate change, since the Korean War America seems to be repeatedly shooting itself in the kneecap for no benefit whatsoever. But a real security panic is about right in terms of scale and urgency. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, we didn't spend five years pissing and moaning about the projected national debt 50 years hence. We strapped our boots on and laid waste with the hammer of justice. Because FDR, and even Congress, realized that reducing the goddamn national debt is less important than making sure the country still exists for the next generation. <laughs>